Hey guys, it's Patrick here. Welcome back to the uh, channel. Finally, I'm doing the Q&A. It's been a long time since people have been asking me to do it. Um, but mainly, I just felt like I needed to keep gathering questions, um, and I needed to add in some of my own just to kind of, I don't know, just, just kind of level it out and add some more details in there about myself. <clears throat> so yeah, we'll just start off. I just made a small list. Uh, if I do Q&As in the future, and you say you like ask me a question in the comments or something, uh, you guys should let me know if you want me to include like your username or whatever uh, like in the video, you know, just like paste it in there so that people know it's from you. Um, you can let me know if you want that or if you prefer it, you know, anonymously uh, is the way I'm doing it right now. But yeah, we'll start off. Uh, somebody asks, you know, what are some other music uh, tastes that I have or, you know, just things I like to listen to. Uh, frankly, there's not a lot that I listen to outside of K-pop. I mean, sometimes, occasionally, uh, Bruno Mars or some old Maroon 5 stuff. Uh, I've kind of gotten into Migos very recently just because of Stir Fry. Um, but when it comes to American pop music or hip-hop or rap, I'm, you know, it's not that I necessarily dislike it. I just don't have as much interest in it because it's... Uh, in my opinion, just like a smaller view on what music can be. It's, you know, music is good to listen to, but um, as a lot of people have put it, you know, music these days can also be more visually stimulating as the way it is in K-pop. And that's what I, you know, really enjoy, really. I'm all about the details, you know, so K-pop definitely clicks with me more than other styles of music. And I'm sure there's probably plenty of styles of music that I don't know about that do have more of a, uh, a visual aspect to them, so, you know, maybe I'll learn about them one day. Uh, I also sometimes listen to uh, classical or choral music, uh, mainly due to the fact that in high school I spent, you know, all four years uh, in the choir program, and it's been a part of me that's, you know, I've just felt really grateful that I've had that in my life because um, my high school teacher, if you will, was you know, a very nice person and a very hard-working person and uh, the qualities that he have that he has, sorry, are, you know, qualities that I would like to have in my life, you know, going forward, whether it be, you know, in a totally different field of work or even if it happens to be in music, then that would be great too. But, you know, there always are some qualities that you see in people that you would just like, you know, to have yourself and have them stick in your life. So that's, yeah, a little more about music history in terms of myself. Uh, next we've just got uh, quite a few people asking me about my age. Uh, currently I'm 18, but I was born in March. So I'll be turning 19 pretty soon. Um, yeah, so I'm a 99 kid. Almost a 2000s kid. <laughs> but yeah, that's that. Uh, yeah, almost 19. Uh, do I have any biases? Like, probably, I'm assuming they're referring to maybe an ultimate bias in K-pop. Uh, I usually don't try to pick biases in K-pop, uh, just because I really enjoy seeing all the different uh, personalities and characteristics of everybody uh, in a said group. But I would probably just have to pick V from BTS, because BTS is one of the groups that really introduced me into K-pop, and I've always just enjoyed uh, V's stage presence and his, you know, performance, so... And his personality is kind of silly and, you know, I don't know, he's just a cool guy. So yeah, I would go with V if I absolutely had to pick someone. Uh, where am I originally from? I was born in Salida, Colorado, which is a central Colorado. It's a pretty small town, but uh, it's, you know, continuously growing. It's a really outdoorsy type of place. A lot of uh, you know, like, rowing on the river, or actually, I wouldn't say rowing, it's more like, you could say water rafting, um, yeah, stuff like that, it's down, definitely a, uh, downhill skiing, uh, yeah, essentially just a lot of outdoor activities, um, for the most part, a fairly, you know, healthy place to live, uh, the air quality is really good, um, I didn't end up going to school there, actually, whatsoever, I was about three and a half before I moved to Flagstaff, Arizona, uh, as my dad, he, you know, was employed there um, on a different assigned job. So I spent quite a few years in Flagstaff, Arizona, 
Uh, another place good, uh, another good place to live, sorry. Definitely just a kind of nice place for a family and for, you know, a young child to grow up. Um, so I spent my elementary school years there and then I moved to American Canyon, California, which is uh, more towards the Napa area, Northern California, not too far away from San Francisco, maybe an hour drive. And yeah, that's where I kind of experienced more diversity in terms of, you know, ethnic cultures, um, and that's kind of where I felt like, you know, I got to experience some, some new things in life. Um, I wouldn't necessarily say that California is the only place that kind of shaped who I am, but it's, you know, it's played a role. I'm sure, you know, everywhere I've lived has shaped me to be who I am, um, and, you know, wherever I go in the future will surely do the same thing. And yeah, currently I'm living in uh, Bangkok, Thailand. Just kind of took a gap year from uh, going to a university. Mainly just due to the fact that, you know, senior year I really didn't know what to pick a major in just because I, you know, feel that I could do well at a lot of things and I enjoy a lot of things. So, you know, some people might not see that as a bad thing that you enjoy to do, you know, a lot of different things, but when it comes down to picking just one, it can be a you know, hard decision. So I ended up not picking anything and just taking a year to travel Thailand, see family, uh, doing all of this with my parents. Uh, I appreciate that they're always there to you know, kind of help me in the world and they've given me such opportunities to even you know, see more of the world. Um, travel is definitely probably a larger priority in our family than say buying materialistic things. Uh, I think mainly just due to the fact that um, my parents see the value of learning in a more positive light than they do like say buying expensive things, you know what I mean? Uh, what other, oh yeah, hobbies. Somebody was asking about hobbies as well. Just, you know, frankly what I do on my downtime, things like that. Uh, in terms of athletics, I would definitely say tennis has been in my life the longest. Um, with tennis, I've taken a lot of time off and, you know, kind of just like flip-flopped back and forth. Um, I understand this happens to a lot of tennis players, frankly, because the sport can feel kind of pressuring and, frankly, can burn you out a lot of the times because, uh, you know, if you're playing singles in tennis, you do have a coach who's training you, um, but when you're playing matches and such, you're just, you know, you've got to focus on yourself a lot and you've got to be really in the zone all the time and if you don't have a very strong will and passion you know frankly sometimes you can just burn out um, and you kind of feel like oh well I want to do some other things for now because you know I don't have the same energy going into it and yeah with myself you know if I don't have the right energy to do something uh, it's not I feel it doesn't belong in my life, at least for that period of time. I, you know, I think it's better to just kind of recover and hopefully you gain that inspiration back with whatever you do. But I think uh, pushing it can definitely um, not work in your favor sometimes. But I mean, I'm sure it actually, you know, being pushed harder, being pushed to your limits does certainly work for a lot of people as well. So I think it's more of a personal, personal taste. Uh, yeah, like I said, some people become very successful off of you know, having to work really hard and maybe not necessarily liking what they do, but it ends up, you know, falling in place for them and they have success in whatever it is. Um, what are some other hobbies? Oh yeah, I really like playing video games, like a lot, like probably way too much, <laughs> but it's always been there uh, because, I don't know, I just feel it's a outlet to escape from, you know, things that are happening in your daily life. And frankly, I mean, I could say, you know, in regards to myself, and I'm sure a lot of other people say that, um, you know, video games help you get through tough things or things that just make you unhappy in life. Um, you know, frankly, that is something I think a lot of people can relate to. It's just, like I said, a means to just get your mind off of things. And, you know, there's a lot of other things in the world that do that as well, but it's certainly important to find those things in life that can just make you feel better, make you feel good about yourself, you know, same with uh, sports, working out, things like that, you know, they just help you feel better, feel good about yourself, um, 
those are things that are always important, right? Uh, somebody actually asked me like my future goals. Uh, what goals do I have for my life? And sometimes, you know, it's actually really hard for myself to set goals, which is not a good thing because, you know, it's actually not a bad idea to be goal driven even if you don't necessarily attain that goal, you know? It, it's just good to work towards something. But, um, you know, sometimes I wish I knew about K-pop sooner or kind of wish I auditioned earlier, you know, that that's just one thing that I've always thought about would be really cool to be at least a trainee. Uh, not necessarily even becoming an idol, even for myself, just being a trainee would be such an opportunity because I think it would just teach you a lot about yourself in terms of, um, you know, learning your independence a bit and certainly learning respect and patience and hard work, um, all things that, you know, you can use in any part of your life. I think that's very valuable. So just that aspect of being a trainee would be so cool. But of course, being a K-pop idol, as I love music so much and, you know, all the performance aspects so much, that would be a really cool thing. But I wouldn't say that's necessarily a goal of mine, just because it is a very unlikely thing to happen. Um, frankly, if, you know, I really wanted it that badly, I think I would be auditioning a lot more. And I, frankly, I've only auditioned one time, so, you know, yeah, maybe it's something I say that I would like to do, but it's not just necessarily something that I, you know, have an absolute hunger for. Maybe just because I feel that I don't necessarily fit the mold uh, perfectly, you know, as an idol does. Because, you know, standards and uh, normalities in, in K-pop are, you know, the, the bar is high <laughs> for sure. So, you know, it's just kind of one of those things I think about. But in terms of actual future goals definitely just I just want to do something in regards to entertainment or music uh, I want to leave it broad just because I don't want to have too much pressure or you know expectation just put on myself uh, that's something I do a lot is just you know look down upon myself in a negative manner a lot so I need to try to do that less and just just you know make sure that I'm going towards a goal or towards something that's what I, you know, something I enjoy. Uh, so that's certainly what I'm going to do. Um, you know, having a business major and then minoring in music or something like that would be a really good way to go. So I'll probably do something like that. But frankly, I don't really know, you know, I just don't know. I can't say much on that. Uh, yeah, that's good. I think that's a pretty good explanation for goals. Man, these questions are turning pretty deep, huh? I see other people's Q and A's. It's like <laughs> quick, short answers. <laughs> Mine's just going into this long, spiraling conversation. Oh yeah, and actually, I forgot one more hobby. Um, I've kind of just been lucky, or frankly, I don't really know how it's happened, but sometimes I get to model. Um, You know, it's it's pretty fun, but it's also kind of uh, not necessarily demeaning. But I don't know. Sometimes it just uh, hits my self confidence as well because you know I go to some castings for model jobs, and you know I can just like most of the time I can just tell that they're not even interested to begin with, but they still make me do the shoot anyway. So it's like uh, I just feel like the energy is so off. Like it's just so awkward in the the casting room. I'm like why am I here? I mean, I can already tell that they're not really interested. Um, you know, I understand in modeling, there's a lot to do with uh, just having connections. And frankly, um, you know, there's a lot of favoritism. And you know, if you're obviously more popular, or if you're you know kind of a celebrity already, you've definitely got an advantage over other people. But yeah, like I said, I've, I've only done like one or two runway shows, but they've been, you know, really cool. Like I said, it's pretty cool that I even have those experiences in my life. Um, you know, even if it's not really a means of actually making income, you know, it's not, it's not like I get to model for Gucci and I'm like just throwing the bands, you know what I mean? It's not like that or anything, but it's still something cool just to do. Um, you know, it just, it feels 
kind of natural for me, I guess you could say, to do stuff like that. I don't know why. Like, like I said, in a casting room, it feels very awkward, and I just don't feel like myself. But when I'm actually, you know, in front of a crowd or expected to do something that's more pressuring, I guess you could say, it feels more comfortable for my, my myself. As long as I, you know, practice whatever I need to practice. Um, I think I always value practice in whatever I do. But yeah, you know, you practice and you feel good about yourself and confident, and then it just kind of unfolds on its own, and you feel good. Um, I'm pretty sure that's all the questions. Yeah, there just, I guess there's just not really too many questions. Um, I guess I can just, you know, say thank you to everybody who watches and, you know, to all the people who have been here since the very beginning or, well, it's, it's never, frankly, haven't, it hasn't been that long, like not even two months since the channel's been up. But yeah, whether you're new or old um, in terms of subscribing or just frankly viewing, thank you for always being here, guys. Um, you know, I guess I'm pretty surprised on, you know, how the channel's panning out and how much more I enjoy being on camera and talking to people. Uh, I definitely notice that in myself. Um, you know, I've just enjoyed it more, being in front of the camera. It feels more natural. Uh, and, you know, I think that's a good thing because, you know, I'm doing a video like this today and it's showing just more of my side and, I don't know, you know, I feel like you know, like I've said before, it's always something I've wanted to do just to show more of myself. Uh, and I'll definitely probably do more of these in the future just because, you know, I think it's just valuable to really demonstrate who I am to the people watching me, frankly. Uh, I don't want to feel like a stranger to anybody and I think it's better to just build a channel off like that. Uh, not necessarily worried of, I'm not worried about, you know, my success necessarily on YouTube, but Obviously that would be very nice to be successful just because I can reach out to more people and you know we can all just enjoy K-pop together and frankly talk about a lot of other things. Um, yeah, I guess we'll just have to see where the channel goes. You know, same thing with I, when I was talking about goals, I just never really know where things will go. Um, and you could say the same thing about the channel as well. I just need to make sure that I obviously keep the channel active and you know keep uploading and just keep interacting with people who uh, view the videos. Um, but yeah, I guess we'll do another Q&A in the future. This one was, I guess, maybe a really long, but that, that that's not a bad thing. It's the very first one, so maybe there was just a lot I felt like talking about. So yeah, peace out. Hope this wasn't too long and too boring. I'll try to add some background music, stuff like that, so that, you know, it's more engaging but yeah see ya in another one hey you like that intro music check out my boy aspen in his soundcloud he's got them fire beats